Hi, good morning. It's 11.19 right now. This is Trax Momentum on Trax FM. Our interviews begin right now. We're going to start talking to our guest in the studios. Her name is Ms. Yasmin Rashid, the president of Eco Knights, the honorary advisor as well for CLEF, which stands for KLEFF, the uh, Kuala Lumpur Eco Film Festival 2015. Ms. Yasmin, or can I just call you Yasmin? Yasmin is fine. <laughs> Yasmin, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for taking for the time to me. come talk, and, uh, talk to us over here today. And how are you today? I'm fine. Um, I could do better without the haze. You but can do better okay, without yeah. the haze. <laughs> and pretty much also in, in line with what you do, about, a lot about eco and, and taking mm-hmm. care of the environment. What, mm-hmm. what are your thoughts on the haze? Um, I think there is a really serious need for concerted effort, uh, tripartite effort between you know Indonesia, Malaysia and Singapore to look at how we're going to um, really work on, number one, catching the culprits for this mm-hmm. number two working on more maybe enforcement and governance la. that's so right I think people's health are severely affected very much yeah and that also can cause some economic problem like, like this this time is really bad for tourism very bad yeah so I hope the government will not wait for two years before we upgrade our monitoring stations and, and, and look at more immediate steps to take. La. That's right. Mm. Okay, yes. I mean, let's start with asking you know, about <laughs> what you do. I mean, what is it you have to do? What's a day at work like for you? Um, today has been interesting. I have like four papers to write. I've got a, a lineup of conferences and presentations due in the next two weeks. So, um, I try to de-stress every half hour so that I can mm. have good clarity and you know be creative in my writing so that's what I've been up to and right. right after I leave I'm going back to writing again you're very stressed <laughs> out are, are you what you have to do yeah yeah and maybe cut back on coffee like, that helps that's right yeah it does orange juice is what you should be going at <laughs> thanks yep, for the tip that's, Nigel uh, yep okay so uh, the Kuala Lumpur Eco Film Festival and uh, can you tell us a little bit about that well, um, it's, I mean, it's, it is what it is, a film festival, but uh, we, it has an environment-specific theme. A uh, festival that uh, was conceptualized uh, by Eco Nights in 2008. And um, after eight years, uh, the festival aims to basically try to get more Malaysians to come and learn about little things they can do at home or in the office. Uh, to start changing the way we live a little bit lah. Mm. You know, looking at maybe uh, greener ways of consumption That's uh, right. products. Number two, maybe better management of your household so you can live a little bit healthier, chemical free maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you um, how are you sure about what you're buying for your family to eat? So a, a lot of times environment or green or eco is not just about planting that tree or recycling a lot of it has to do with how we lead our daily lives how we lead our daily lives mm. and and the eco nights are very concerned about this yeah? yeah maybe for the benefit of those who don't know about eco nights tell us about eco nights uh, we're a ngo environmental ngo registered with register of societies we're about 10 years old um and the bulk of the work we do we have four pillars the first is education and awareness so we work uh, closely with ministries uh, number two is community development and empowerment so we do have some projects uh, in rural areas uh, with orang aslis to look at how do we best provide positive interventions in your life uh, without disrupting the existing livelihood okay but work on more um, making it more sustainable for them la. So they, they, it was quite shocking. There are a lot of communities, even though we are not going to be developed in five years' time, yeah, so to speak. Uh, there are still many communities that um, don't enjoy the basic facilities we have around here, lah. Water, mm. energy, um, healthcare, and all that. That's true. So we work That's in true. this segment as well, uh, together with the communities. Uh, so it's not like we go in there and tell them we know what's best for you, but we go in there engage them and collectively together work on what's best for their community and how's it going uh, how's it been going so far mm, it's um it's got its ups and downs and challenges uh for one a lot of it points back to enforcement authorities uh legal issues like land rights and all that so it's, it's quite challenging uh, especially when you're kind of like it seems like most days we're playing the role of a mediator trying to um, improve the lives of marginalized communities but many of the times we really have to knock on doors of authorities as well so right now there's a big dichotomy between these two parties and um, but well, when we strive uh, every year we, we try different techniques um, 
to either educate. I mean, I, I guess certain government agencies also need to be educated because we're more on the ground. So we try to bring all these on-ground stories to them, share with them and see what is the best possible solution right. the country can, can make for these communities. Right. And Eco Nights is something just started locally over here or is local, it something we're 100% that's around? Local. local. And you want to go around the world maybe later on? I'm uh, sh- I don't know. I'm There's sure so much to do be, here. Yeah. <laughs> we could start with your own backyard first. Yes. Yeah? I, I would love to just focus uh, in Malaysia or even just give focus in, in Klang Valley also it's good because there's that's a right. lot of work to be done that's here. right there's a lot of work to be done here and a lot of work to be done around the world as yes, well and, and the Pope shares your, your, your concern as yes. well he was and recently, the Dalai Lama that's right <laughs> and a lot of a lot of religious leaders yeah and, yeah. and recently when he visited the, the uh, America you know it's like it's, it's strange that one of the visits was for the homeless yes, I mean you he, would think he chose to develop, dine with them yeah but yeah. to think that a developed country like America and then you have the homeless yeah, and it's like, yeah. y- you know, yeah. yeah, and and well, that's happening everywhere, and and like mm-hmm. you said, you're gonna start somewhere, and you're gonna start at home for us over here, yeah. and and taking care of the environment is something that we all should actually be very concerned it should about. Be second nature. It should be second nature, right? And, <laughs> yes. But we don't do that, right? No. Yeah. No, we don't. I mm. think. Um, am I allowed to to share why I think so? Yes. Um, I think we've kind of lost track of how important it is to instill this in our education system and all that. And I, 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 you know, no, no matter what naysayers say to me, I, I still feel that you really have to drill this through from preschool age right up to, you know, university or, or, or even high school age. And um, looking at my children's textbooks and all, and I just wish they would do more things outdoor. I wish, I wish we could just look at how every subject matter that we study in school drives towards living a better life, quality life, sustainably. Like I said, it's not just about protecting a tree or an animal. That's right. It's really about how we, we, we look at our actions. Do we know what our actions generate out there? Mm. Yes, or are we just going to leave it for somebody else to worry about, mm. right? Like, for example, uh, uh, something that happened over here this morning, there was a, a little flooding that happened in Kasapuri. <laughs> and that, that was because, you know, this is just people and, and their mindsets and, and the way they, they, they go about. But, you know, we had a water problem over here. There was no water in Kasapuri for about two or three days. And now that the water's come back, mm-hmm. somebody had left a tap on. And, oh and you God. know, like, you, you turn, you turn the, the, the tap on and you can't get any water. And then, you know, you That's just leave it open. Yeah. And when the water does come back, what happens is, you know, you get that whole gush of, of uh, water coming out, right? And we have Virginia Kennedy outside the doors over there. Mr. Barrett, sir, <laughs> she seems to be having a problem coming in the door. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, she'll be in, in a bit from now. So, lots of film people over here today. But as I was saying, you know, that, that whole little bit about people just not wanting to... to, to to you know take that concern and you mentioned that your kids as young as they are and they go to school do you think that some of the emphasis has been too much on exams for them oh, at an early definitely. age not just exams i mean just looking at the subjects you're tested on i mean and my daughter just went through upsr last year mm-hmm. and it's math english science um bahasa uh, two papers in bahasa mm-hmm. there's nothing that tests your creativity except for right. writing maybe um, so right. It's it's quite frustrating. I mean, not all kids are all science driven, or you know, only excel in these five subject matters. You got to look at the other areas which children can excel well in as well. Right. That's yeah. true. So a lot of times we just are concerned with their results and stuff. And then you know, you know, like in Japan, I was I was told that in Japan that they start at a very early age when they're when they go to school. The first things they got to do is they learn about you know about respect, about proper care of the environment, about taking care of nature, and all those things before they are actually concerned about exams. Yeah, and I, I I also heard that um, you know the non typical Jap- Jap- Japanese person will not like pour cooking oil down the drain, mm. store it, and make their own candles. I mean, I think uh, to to transform our Malaysian society to that level, you, you really got to drill it through from right. education. And people don't change overnight, you know. They don't. So this they kind don't. of efforts, right? So if, a, if the government is embarking on, say, a communication campaign or whatever campaign on this, it has to be long term. cannot be just That's the right. term of a minister. <laughs> it's it's just not going to... Gonna 
No. It's just not going to materialize yeah, like Ministers that. come and go, but education system molds the minds of our young generation. That's right. So we really right. need to look in the interests of our younger generation. Very, very true. <laughs> and, and you hope to reach a lot of people through your messages and your films. Yeah, we hope so. I mean, we're very grassroots. Uh, for Kuala Lumpur Eco Film Fest, it's a very grassroots festival. And if you look at who we partner with or so, uh, we, we, and we're not extremely commercial in that sense. You know, there's no tickets involved. Everyone just walks in free. Um, and, and that's the way I like it. I think a festival should be made accessible for people. Um, and free is the way a lot of people like it. Yeah, but, but sometimes <laughs> Magic when it's free, free. so they don't come. <laughs> Even though it's free, yeah? yeah. Well, they can't be too free, maybe, you know? Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, oh. But I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, we just, we just hope that this festival will be just a one-stop center for anyone who's looking to be inspired or empowered to do something um, green in their daily lives. Green in their daily lives. And how are Malaysians responding uh, to, the, <laughs> to this whole green concept? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to draw the parameters to the festival. Uh, I, I'm actually quite happy in the last three, four years, we've seen a a change in the demographics uh, more young people are coming um, like yesterday I was talking to uh, an officer who was uh, addressing volunteers and we have volunteers that are coming from out of town just to be part of this festival and, and then they're all 25 years and below mm. so um, I hope this is a sign that the younger generation is more interested yes um, if they find this exciting and worth coming from distances that far, I hope you're doing the right thing. I'm sure you are. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, tell them about some of the things they can expect when, um, when they get there. Well, um, we have non-stop film screening, more like a movie marathon. Uh, we are screening 116 films over the weekend. Um, and uh, the public can just walk in. Uh, film screening schedule and the kind of films that are being screened are on our website, ecofilmfest.my. Apart from that, if you're looking to be more hands-on, we have 11 workshops and activities that are suitable for children as young as five to adults like you and me. So, um, and we have a, a, a variety of workshops, whether you're interested to start an urban farm, uh, whether you're interested to learn about aquaponics, um, how do you upcycle things into creative products? Uh, we've got a, a workshop for almost every 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 segment of society. Now, the interesting part that I'd like to share is the green market. Okay. Uh, the whole idea of the green market is to pull together Malaysian and international green enterprises or businesses to come and promote their products and services. Um, we have about 76 exhibitors. Uh, some of them are NGOs, some of them are social enterprise. And why we are pu putting focus in the green market is we, we really want to scale up the awareness and the adoption of um, sustainable consumption and production. I, I think many of us are not aware that consumerism is one of the key factors that's that's um, leading to all the environmental damages you see today. Mm. From the baju we wear right. to the products that we buy, right. uh, how we dispose of these products. When the products. buying stops, the killing can too. Mm, <laughs> the chemicals involved in these yes. products. Ah, uh, so are you suge suggesting that? Are you saying that you know we should know about what we're buying and, and when that support actually stops, yes. then you know there is a way of actually making those people who come up with all these kind of products that are not meant to be yes. out there, they would actually stop? Yes, um, definitely. Take palm oil, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, we are... Uh, expressing our hatred to certain parties which I think are, are, are it's, it's like almost like blaming people for this problem, the haze but actually if, if you look at it from a bigger picture almost every product we use daily has a palm oil derivative in it mm -hmm. so the reason why more land needs to be cleared for palm oil or people are intensifying palm oil um, agriculture is because um, we are demanding these products right. from your shampoo, your soap, your noodles, your cakes, mm -hmm. right up to your chocolates. They all have palm oil derivatives. Palm right. oil is like the super oil. Uh. So when you have people illegally clearing land, it's because there is some demand out there. You better it's black market or not, people when they need palm oil, they buy from you. So if, if you look at the, the di dynamics of it or the economics of it, if we are all made aware that everything we purchase has oil, then you, it's your choice after this. 
If you want to support the our industry or not, you make your choice as a consumer. Whether you want to buy or you don't want to buy. Right. And that actually relates back to uh, that plantation that's actually burning um, irresponsibly as well. That's right. So I, I hope people see that their actions every day actually uh, snowballs into bigger impacts later. Right, and Eco Nights has all this coming on in this film festival that you have yeah, going on, and the we, workshops, yeah? Yeah, uh, some of these films are award-winning, never seen before in Malaysia, so we're screening it for the first time, mm -hmm. and um, it, it really opens up your mind and perspective to the global issue is that's fi that we are facing, and also um, understanding in, in detail and in depth what are the causes of these issues now? That's right. Mm. Okay, back with Yasmin Rashid over here, president of Eco Nights, right after this one from Jamiroquai, seven days in sunny June. We're going to be hoping for a lot more sunny days over here, and yeah, may that haze go away. Good morning, you. <laughs> Eco Film Festival, KLEFF, is what we're talking about over here. It is the, uh, well, the International Kuala Lumpur Film Festival is Malaysia's first and longest running environmental film festival. In the last seven years, the festival has reached out to approximately 71,187 exactly uh, Malaysians through its film screenings and programs at selected venues all over the peninsula, organized by non uh, not for profit environmental organization Eco Nights. The festival is a platform to facilitate building a nation of ecologically conscious businesses, individuals, and communities through on ground activities and film screenings focused on critical environmental issues such as climate change, sustainable food production, waste management, and more, yeah? It's a mouthful, huh? There you go, yes. <laughs> Clef promotes three main thrusts, a lot over there, yeah. You were saying, why don't you tell us about the three uh, main thrusts that you promote? And and I know you know it off the cuff. You don't even have to look at the piece of paper, <laughs> right? So, uh, here we go. I guess one of the things you mentioned earlier was uh, sustainable production and consumption. And I think what we want to really do is raise the benchmark for people to uh, be aware that how consumerism and how every daily uh, purchases um, impact the environment. Uh, I mean, this, this doesn't come up very obvious for most general Malaysians, but um, collectively, you know, you know, 30 million people, if every day every Malaysian says no to one plastic bag or a box, and uh, that it easily, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a math genius, but there's like 30 million plastic yeah. bags not being thrown away. That's right. So consumerism does play a, a, a very big collective impact um, right. to the environment. And she's such a passionate person when she talks about it. You can see it in her, you know, in her, in her, the way she talks. And she's got this huge ring over there of a snake. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like something, you know, the Phantom, you know, that cartoon, that, that comic, the Phantom. It's like every time you get a punch, you like, do you do that? I mean, do you leave that in anybody no, who... No, <laughs> but it, everyone does tell me it makes a, a, a nice weapon. Uh, it, it does, <laughs> snake on your on your finger over there yeah, yeah. It's and, conversation piece but it's true because when you talk about people and, and that plastic bag issue right so we get people who, who walk over to a place and they order something and yeah they have that that big bag that's eco-friendly and they go over and they collect five or 15 plastic other bags plastic bags there. and put it into that eco bag that's quite a common sight isn't it yeah and I don't think uh, yeah I think the message needs to be a bit clearer to them mm. yeah. what else do you see happening that that a lot of people don't realize um, food. Uh, I think um, many of us, uh, I, I mean, it's just, just food in general is not just a local problem, it's also a global problem. Um, number one is, um, our, is food being produced um, in a way that's um, not harming the environment, number one. Number two, not harming our health. Uh, so if you're aware, there's a lot of uh, food these days that uh, have lost its original essence, uh, genetically modified organisms, for instance, uh, and so forth. So um, number two is also the way we treat food waste. Um, I'm sure you're aware, uh, it's how ironic it is that during the fasting month, is the month we record the highest amount of food being thrown mm. into our garbage bins and therefore that ends in the landfill. Um, which is weird because it's supposed to be the month where you, you abstain from, from you know, uh, feasting. Uh, but yet it's also the month we throw the most amount of food. Uh, I think Malaysians, as we climb up the, the ladder of uh, development, or, you know, getting on from middle class EU-ish, um, we feel like we can dispose of things very easily. And I think that's a mindset that's not really sustainable if you look at it in the bigger picture. Um, and unfortunately, that's how it is. Yeah, we live why in a very I, disposable society, don't you think? Why should I be concerned? It's somebody else's problem yeah, tomorrow. Somebody will pick it up. Yeah. Somebody will clean it up. Yeah. Um, 
out of sight, out of mind. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that somehow is is very challenging to drill through. Right. Uh, like I said earlier on, uh, is it is it really about education? C- can can education transform our mindsets, or do we have to wait for a crisis to come before we start pulling our act together? By then, it'll be too late. Mm. Yeah. But but we seem to be option mm-hmm. B la, the latter because we normally re- are more reactive. Yes. In times of crisis. Well, we may not see the bigger picture of all the importance of long-term planning and looking at identifying uh, variables that make a difference to the country. So mm-hmm. that, that really needs to be, have, have a serious look at. Seriously, yes. Yeah. And, and some of the films that are going to be screened, uh, you mentioned some just now. Well, The Thrust, you, you stopped at The Trust, uh, your first one. Your second, your two others that you didn't um, get into? I like this film from France called Banking Nature. It Banking really talks Nature. talks about trade agreements and impact of trade agreements, which Malaysia might sign one soon with the U.S., on, on losing the natural resources of the country because I think the capital list today, um, I mean, there's only so much you can do in terms of industry and products and marketing. But the inter- uh, uh, capitalists these days are rushing into using trade agreements to acquire natural resources in other countries. Yes. Um, so, because for instance, in the US, uh, I don't think you can say they have m- a lot of re- natural resources. And natural resources are very bankable. Uh, from the tree, from the soil to everything. So um, for those who cannot seem to see the impact of um, economy on environment, I really highly encourage you to watch Banking Nature. It has won many awards internationally. Um, and another one I, I think is also it's narrated by um, um, Robert Redford's brother, uh, which is on how farming is changing um, society in uh, Germany and France. So that will be interesting to watch as well. There is a new movement coming up of communities that are trying to live more sustainably without reliance on um, money to purchase food and so forth. Um, are such Is such a movement uh, going to be big in the future? We're not sure, but it, it's, it's an interesting film to look at. What does it take to live with minimal impact on the environment? Right. It's not an easy task. La. That's right. Who do you think is uh, who is your your who would you like to see coming over for the films? Who should be interested, and uh, who do you think should be grabbing this opportunity to come? Um, the thing is, the films are all made for a, a broad target audience. So this morning we got an email and someone said, "Hey, are there any films you can recommend for my children? They're six and eleven, and we do have a range you do? of of, of uh, animation, okay. short films, and other creative." I'm going to be for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be there for that one. Yeah. Bring so, out the inner so child. So you're starting you. them. You're starting them young. Yeah. Yeah. That's where it should all start. Yeah. Yes. There's one called Captain Fish. is really cool about mm-hmm. a little kid and a, a, a fillet, fish fillet, and, uh-huh. and she was like throwing it away, and and then then there was this whole flashback about how that fillet got on her plate. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's really good to teach children about being more responsible, you know, uh, with your daily actions. That's right. And then you have those, uh, I mean, there are some films that we're not screening also. As they're, they're just I think you should show those those uh, films to the adults because a lot of adults have lost that fascination. Yeah, when they turn a rock over and they see a snail, they're not yeah. amazed anymore. Yeah, I would like to have the adults watch these animations with the children because mm-hmm. I can already see the kind of, uh, uh, predict the kind of questions the child will ask their parents. That's right. That's a movie that's a lot more positive than Desperate Housewives. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so apart from that, uh-huh. uh, I mean, I, I do encourage anyone who's listening to this to just head on over to our Facebook page or website and uh, explore yourself what attracts you. Yeah. Um, what tickles you and uh, try to make a date and come and see us in two weeks time. That's right. And how can organizations uh, play a part and how can they help? Um, they can help by, I guess, coming to network. I think that's important. I mean, I, I really, the, the whole festival in the green market is meant to strengthen um, the ecosystem of uh, green entrepreneurs, NGOs out there. I think the more we understand each other, the more we can figure out where are the linkages we can make to each other. So at the end of the day, it's not just one NGO struggling to do something like plant more trees. But if everyone is aware which NGOs are doing what, what sort of help they need, I think it's best to come head on down and talk. Talk, I think, I think even if you're not interested in shopping or films or workshops, it's fine. But I think the conversations you will make at the festival will be very, very valuable. Uh, 
for all segments of the public. That's right. We're not going to be able to cover everything over here this morning, no. Yasmin. Uh, so now, how about information? How are people going to get a lot more information from you, and, and where can they look for you? Um, that's the website, uh, www.ecofilmfest.my. Mm-hmm. Um, for more updates, uh, I would encourage you to just head over to our Facebook page, Kuala Lumpur Eco Film Festival, right. as they have hourly and, uh, you know, five updates daily to tell you about how to get there uh, uh, in, a, in a greener way, for instance, carpooling. We do have uh, a company that's providing carpooling services um, so forth. So definitely on the social media, we're more up to date with that. Lah. Right. I encourage you to just check us out on Facebook. That's right. And the festival will be held at MAK Publica. MUP Publica. Yeah, MAP Publica. 16, 18. 16 October. to the 18th of October, yeah. Mm. And uh, is there anything else you have to bring? Just bring themselves and bring uh, everybody. Bring your they shopping can bring. bags. Bring your Please, shopping bags. Because uh, there won't be any plastics. Mm-hmm. At <laughs> the civil fairground. Right. Um, so if you're planning to shop or tap out your food, please bring your own containers. Bring right. your own water bottles. We have free water stations everywhere. Um, bring your phone chargers. Uh, if you want, we have a few solar power charging stations for people who are caught with a low battery here and there. And um, lastly, come with an open mind. Come with an open mind. <laughs> and, and how many hours can they spend over there having a wonderful time? Um, if So if you factor in, throw in lunch with your friends at the festival, you can right. s- expect to spend about two to three hours there. Lah. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> so, okay, it's going to be on from morning, right? From an- 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. 10, 10 till 10. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Oh, one more thing. Um, yes. Uh, there'll be a lot of indigenous groups. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're very excited. Many of them are coming to fundraise. Uh, for their own efforts so they're doing a lot of dances they're doing a lot of indigenous arts and craft right so for people who and we have some indigenous communities coming all the way from Sabah and Sarawak so if you've not met them before you're curious about their culture their music uh, their attire uh, we, we encourage you to come most of the activities are all free anyway that's right if you just if you just don't you're, if you're not interested in anything we talked about over there but it's a, it's a day away from the norm you can come over there and just do something different for the whole day at the same time that's where it's going to change your mind yes, yeah but definitely. it's uh, it's a lot more than that folks so come on over <laughs> and, and meet Yasmin and the gang over there uh, the Eco Night's going to be there as well yeah yes lovely definitely. lovely look forward to that and yeah. thank you for Hope taking the time there. I will I will be there and thank you for for coming here and talking to us this Thanks, morning on tracks Joe. it's been a pleasure and we'll repeat those addresses and the numbers again later on as we go along yeah okay miss yasmin rashid president of eco nights over here today to talk to us about the eighth international clef the kuala lumpur eco film festival 2015 it's going to be on folks from uh, the 18th 16th to the 18th of october at map publica uh, map yeah be there mm-hmm.